Hey guys, I wanted to talk about how to publish a book on a budget and especially this is important if you are wanting to sell your book for free and you don't want to make a profit on it, you want to give it away, then you really need a budget. But honestly, I think we all could use a good author budget anyway and I will eventually do a video on that. But for this video, I wanna talk about how to publish your book on a budget specifically with editors, the cover design, and the actual publishing itself. So this is assuming that you already have figured out the writing of the book part and this is at the part where you actually want to do something with it. So let's dive into it. I'm really excited about this idea because we had a friend over this weekend and he was like, I'm writing a book. Can we talk about, like, I have some questions for you. And I got so excited. I don't know if any of you have ever had this where a friend in real life says, I'm writing a book, but if you have, you know how exciting it is. And I, as usual, wanted to just share everything all at once, and I probably overwhelmed him. But he is writing a story about his experiences with police as a black man. And so he wanted to publish his book for free so that as many people as possible could get it. He did not want to, you know, put it out for profit. He wanted to just put it out for free. And so he had all these questions about it and I was just coming up with more and more things to share. And I was thinking this is probably a resource that more people could benefit from. So I wanna share with you some of the things that I shared with him and I hope that they'll be helpful for you. I'm gonna screen share here with you and show you um, all the fun stuff that I shared. Okay, let's start with editors because a lot of you might think I don't really need to do an editor, but I would encourage you to consider it because you don't want your hard work, the stuff that you've poured so much energy and time into to come across as sloppy and amateur and be riddled with typos and other errors. It's very, very, very easy to do because you are a writer, but that doesn't mean you have all the other skill sets that an editor would have and you don't have the training and the professional background that they have. So um, there are a few things. I'm gonna start with this company called Readsy. So Readsy is where I have found one of my editors in the past and it's really cool because they also have a lot of other things along the top here. They have marketing, they have, I believe, cover design. I haven't looked into this deeply, but you can pick your if it's fiction project or nonfiction project you can narrow it down for instance I write fantasy um, and then it's gonna narrow down the number of people that you would specifically want to work with and that are trained in that specific type of thing you can also narrow it down by the type of editing that you need so if you're writing a story and it's your very first time you might really want to consider developmental editing because it's gonna help you avoid really big picture issues. But if you are writing maybe nonfiction and you just wanna make sure that your sentence level stuff is good and that it's coming across as readable, you would wanna look into copy editing. Um, and if you're feeling really, really, really confident about your writing, you could just look into proofreading, which is kind of more the typo level. Um, some proofreaders look at formatting and making that beautiful, but it's every single editor is different. So even if you narrow it down here, you could still find people who can do multiple types of edits and maybe somebody who does both developmental and copy editing or copy editing and proofreading and somebody who can kind of give you a little help with both things. Just FYI, we're starting with the more expensive and then I'm gonna show you some cheaper options after this. But once you have gone through and you find some people that you enjoy, you can go ahead and reach out to five people at a time and ask them for a sample edit. And so do not go with the first person that you find. Ask them for a sample edit, ask them for you know how much they charge it's usually per word. Some really common amounts I've seen are anywhere between like 0.008 cents per word or 0.15 cents per word. Zero point, no, 0 0.015 cents per word. <laughs> um, it sounds like nothing, but it adds up, trust me. If you do the math on like a 70,000 word novel, it adds up. And some editors will charge by the hour or there's a few other charges, but I like, the one thing that I like about Readsy is that while the editors on this platform are definitely, definitely more expensive, um, you will find that they are also more professional, usually more experienced, and there's this kind of cool buffer that Readsy has where they make sure that you actually do the work before the person gets paid. So there's a little bit of protection there. But the other place that I showed my friend is actually Goodreads, and this is where I found my first editor ever. And I went to the group called Editors and Writers, so that's right here. Here. And what you can do is things like this post right here where it says seeking affordable editor for paranormal romance And so you can actually just put in a post and be like hey I'm looking for an editor who would be willing to work on 
this genre. <laughs> and you would of course want to include a lot of relevant information so that they can actually know if they're going to be interested in your project or not. Like what it's about, how many words it is, what is your time frame? Like are you looking for somebody right now or in a month or in a few months? Uh, just kind of like try to share as much as you possibly can so that if you were the person on the other side of the screen you would know if you actually want to work with you. And then on the flip side, you can do something like this where you can browse the people who are editors on this platform and are offering to do editing for you. So like this one says, affordable editing for all writers, newly qualified also. So you definitely want to look through and browse and you still want to do that interview process that I talked about where you ask them for sample edits and their pricing and their time frame and how fast they are and if they've had other clients they've worked with in the past, like ask relevant questions to know if this is the person you want to work with and also interview multiple editors. Just like with any other job, there are all kinds of people and you're going to get all kinds of different, uh, I don't know, what's the word I want? All kinds of different sample edits, I guess. Like I explained to my friend that I have had people who do sample edits where they basically rewrote what I said. And I'm like, no, that's that's not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a ghostwriter. I'm looking for somebody who will make my words improved, not make them into their words. <laughs> and so, um, it's something that you need to consider. So this is gonna be your cheaper option. Like you could probably find people even who will work for free because they're building their portfolio and as long as you are okay with them, you know, saying, hey, I worked on this book um, or maybe they're doing it for college or something like that, you can definitely find cheaper options here. But of course, with that comes a little bit less protection. So you'll want to just kind of be careful and make sure that you are, you know, getting what you're paying for if you're paying for something and protecting your work. And of course it will probably involve you doing more work because you'll probably have to sift through more people who aren't a good fit just because it's not as many professionals. It's more people, like literally anybody can be on here. Those are just two examples of where I found editors, but I'm sure you could also find them in a lot of other places. So do your research. Don't just go with the first person. And again, if you're publishing on a budget, it helps to have those sample edits. So you can find somebody who fits in your budget but is still quality, doing quality work. <laughs> and the next thing that I wanna talk about is cover design. And you guys know, you saw that Readsy actually has a design tab. So you could go into this, you could look for somebody who designs book covers here on Readsy. I would guess that if it's anything like the editing <laughs> section, it's gonna be really expensive, but you have to keep in mind that book covers do sell books. And I have a couple videos all about book cover design, which I will link below if you're curious to just know more about why book design is so important because that saying about people don't judge a book by its cover is completely false. We all know that. But if you're publishing on a budget, again, what you're gonna need to do is realize that not spending as much money means spending more in time. So you, you're still gonna be investing. You're just not gonna be investing financially. You're going to be investing your time and your research and energy into finding the right fit for you. So keep that in mind. Don't skimp out on the time just because you're skipping on the money. Like I think you can still find a really, really quality cover designer for hardly anything. An example of that would be again, somebody who's just starting out and wanting to build their portfolio or a college student. You're gonna really, really want somebody who understands cover design, specifically book cover design, because there's a lot of little nitpicky things that go into that, like spine size and how to upload to the different vendors in the exact specifications that they require. So it is complicated, you know, putting on the ISBN, things like that. So just be aware of that. Definitely reach out and ask friends if you have any friends in the writing community. Like for example, my good friend Mandy Lynn designs book covers and so she did my covers and I have done, again, videos I'll link below on that. But if you're looking for a place like I've never worked with Fiverr, but I hear that they have graphic design. I have worked with 99designs and they do book cover designs right here. So if you want to check out companies like this, you can actually get a really, really good deal if you sign up for one of the lower end packages or you can pay a little bit more. And again, <laughs> if you are paying for more, you typically are working with somebody who has more experience and therefore it might be a little bit better quality or just have more success because they know what book cover design should look like. So for example, 
Um, I know that it says here are the different packages where you can do as low as $300, which is what I did when I did a book cover. But I remember when I actually signed up for it, there were options to go even cheaper. I think it was like 100 or 150. And so I think that is a really good deal for a a cover design if it's a quality cover and so just so you guys know 99 designs is cool because it's going to be a contest where a bunch of people um, submit a bunch of designs and you get to pick which ones are kind of in line with your vision and then work with those designers more to keep perfecting them and it's a pretty fast process it's like a couple days three days i think i really enjoyed working with them and again there are other companies out there who could probably have the skills to do something for a very discounted price if you don't want to hire a book cover designer specifically. There are a few specific cover designers in this industry that charge more high price like Damon Za or however you say it. That's one of the biggest names that I know for book covers, but 99design uh, cover designers are very talented as well. Once you have your book edited and you've got your cover designed and you're ready to actually publish, it's harder than most people think. And a lot of people get a little bit stumped when it comes to this. So really quick, I wanna share again what I shared with my friend, which is that first of all, if you wanna actually put your book out into the world for free, there are two workarounds that you can do because it's not as easy as it sounds. You would think it would be easy to give something away for free, but the platforms don't always want to do that. So one of the biggest book publishing companies is KDP or Kindle Direct Publishing, which used to be um, also Create Space. It merged together. So this is Amazon's company, okay guys? They own KDP. And so of course they're going to be very preferential, I think. What is the word that I want? They're going to be very biased towards selling on Amazon. It's fully just selling on Amazon, which is fine. Some people are fine with that. But if you want to sell your book on other vendors like Barnes & Noble, Kobo, um, Apple, Google Play, I don't know, there's a bunch of other vendors or even the library, and you would want to go to another company like, for example, draft to digital And this is the company I use, but there are other companies out there. I think there's another one that's really big called Smashwords. So there's two workarounds when it comes to publishing a free book. So let's go into my pricing for The Cursed Hunter just as an example for you guys. We're going to scroll down to the royalty section. And so what you'll notice here is that there's this little bar underneath the price that says it must be $2.99 or up to $9.99 and this is based on the fact that it's at 70% royalty so if I bump it down to 35% then you'll see this little bar changes to must be 99 cents up to $200 so it will not let me put the book for free so the first workaround that you can have if you want your book to be on Amazon and on Amazon alone, <laughs> and you just wanna use KDP, is that you can put your book into Kindle Unlimited. And so I believe that's right up here at the top. So you can roll in this um, KDP select. The idea with uh, Kindle Unlimited, if you guys have ever seen it on Amazon, then you know, if you are enrolled in Kindle Unlimited, then you can get all the books that have been enrolled in that for free. So that's nice if you're in Kindle Unlimited and it's nice if you purchase books on Amazon, but what if some of your readers don't or they're not in Kindle Unlimited, then they still have to pay full price. Or if they don't use Amazon, they just don't get the book at all. So that's not my favorite workaround. I don't like that. I prefer to use Draft to Digital. So let me click on the same book and we're gonna go into The Curse Hunter again on Draft to Digital. So here is the pricing page on Draft to Digital. And if I do 0, .00 oops, <laughs> then you can see it's gonna let me price the book for zero dollars. Of course, I don't actually have the Amazon, aka KDP box checked here. So Draft to Digital is a company that is not a vendor itself, but it pushes your book out to the different vendors. So you can see Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Apple, Google Play used to be in here. They're not in there right now, but maybe they'll come back. There's some library services. And so you can see that I could check the Amazon box if I didn't have my book on Amazon already, but you'll notice this little thing that says, you cannot set a book price to free at Amazon. We will submit it at a price of 99 cents. So even if you use Draft to Digital <laughs> exclusively and you don't also use KDP, then it's not gonna let you put your book for free on Amazon right away. Now here is the workaround, is that once you have your book 
for free if I put, you know, if I published this and I had it for free at all the other vendors, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Apple, etc., then you would ask Amazon to price match. So you could either wait and see what happens, which I just put the Stolen Kingdom on sale this week. I don't know when you guys are gonna see this video, but right now I had just put the Stolen Kingdom on a 99 cent sale over on draft to digital And then the very next day I saw that Amazon had already price matched. I didn't even have to ask them, but sometimes you'll have to call and ask them. You just call the help desk, which is on KDP right here at the top right there at the top, you know, either in the email or by the phone and say, Hey, can you please um, price match to the other vendors? That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will say one last thing, which is that if you were publishing your book for free and you really, really didn't want to spend any money on it, since you're not going to be making any money on it, then you can definitely find workarounds that are completely free, such as um, getting a lot of writing friends, taking the time to build writing friendships and asking if they'll read it for you and you read their work in return. And if you can get enough uh, professional eyes willing to do maybe more of an exchange of time than an exchange of money, that's one example. Or you can find, again, college students um, working towards being an editor who wants something in their portfolio, things like that. It'll just take more time to research and find the right avenues. And then for cover design, you can make your own cover if you really, really want to. So you have workarounds and I can do a video on that. I have been asked to do a video before. I just don't really believe in making your own book cover unless you absolutely really really need to because I do think a professional is better but if you guys want a tutorial on how to make a book cover for fun until you have a real cover or um, a book cover that can work for a free book then I can definitely do that let me know in the comments below if you would like that and I hope you like this video give it a thumbs up if you did share it with your friends subscribe all that good stuff I appreciate you guys and I'll talk to you again very soon bye